3.3 more optimization problems for you today. The first one is going to be determining the most economical dimensions of a right cylinder can. The second one will be the dimensions of the largest rectangle that can be placed inside a semicircle. And finally, we're going to try to figure out the maximum area to obtain the most light when you're building a window that has an equilateral triangle on top and a rectangle on the bottom. So let's go to the, um, don't forget to subscribe, the economical dimensions of a right cylinder can. So when you're talking about the most economical dimensions, this would be like, say you work for um, a pop company like Coca-Cola, and they said we want to use the, the least amount of aluminum. What is the least amount of aluminum that we will need to make a can with 355 mils? So the most economical dimensions means I'm trying to minimize the surface area. So I've been given volume and I'm going to figure out what the surface area is. So maybe your teacher will give you the equations for these different um, shapes, but you should pretty much understand how to find a volume of a cylinder, right? So what's a volume of a cylinder? A volume of any shape is the area of the base times the height. So the area of the base here, of course, is a circle because right? it's a cylinder, a right cylinder can just means it has a right angle in it. it, means it's straight up and down, it's not slanted. So the area of the base times the height, area of the base times the height here, the area of the base of course is a circle. The area of a circle, pi r squared, and the height is going to be h. Now we do know the volume of the cylinder is 355 mils, so I can put that on this side of the equation here, because that's my equation of constraint. We're not making a can with 700 mils, it's just a 355 mil. So if I wanted to express h in terms of this, and the reason I'm picking h is because um, when we look at the surface area, that's a variable you're going to find that we're going to need. Okay, so. That just means h very simply was going to be 355 divided by pi r squared. Now remember that pi is just a number, okay? It's not a variable, it's just a number. Now the second part of the equation involves the surface area. What is the surface area of a right cylinder? So remember, I'm going to show you here, if this was a cylinder like this, okay? So it would have been toilet paper roll, probably would have worked well. If you have this, you have a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom. And then you have this thing that when you open it up, it becomes a rectangle. So let's draw that first. So we have two circles, I'm just going to sketch them roughly. And we have this rectangle. Same thing with like a juice can or anything else if you opened it up. Now the area of these circles is easy. That's pi r squared, right? The area of a circle. And when I opened it up, this part here, if you look, that becomes the length. And that part happens to be the circumference of a circle, right? So this length here is the circumference of a circle, which you probably remember is 2 pi r. People always get those two mixed up. But remember, if you're squaring something, you have area. So we have 2 pi r, and this is the height. So this was the height of my right cylinder here. And if I want to know the surface area, I'd say, okay, well, I have two circles, so two pi r squareds, and I have the area of this rectangle, which is going to be two pi r h. So I'm going to write that in here, two pi r h. And now you can see why I wanted to find um, another expression for the height, because that height is going to be plugged in to here. Because I want to find the most economical dimension, so I want to be finding the derivative of the surface area, not the volume, okay? Okay, so I plug in 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r, and my height now comes from here, so I'm going to write in 355 divided by pi r squared. And you can see right away that I can't do anything with this, but 2 pi r pi r, we can divide that into this pi r, and I'm going to be left with one r down here. So rewriting this, you always want to put your variables into the numerator before you take the derivative, because it's just easier. So 2 times 355, that's 710. 
and r here is going to be r to the negative 1. Okay, so I'm all set to take the derivative. Remember, this is calculus, so we're going to take the derivative of the surface area as a prime. And now remember what I said about the pi. The pi is just um, a constant, so you're not going to worry about whether or not um, what you have to do with the derivative of that, right? Okay, so just let me make sure. I'm just going to... Okay. Okay, so 2 pi r squared, take the derivative, that gives me 4 pi r. And this one is going to be minus 710. Now r is going to be to the negative 2. So that would be like 710 over r squared, right? Went to the negative, I subtract 1. And now I would say for critical values, CV, set the surface area equal to 0. So if I set this equal to 0, I can just move this to the other side of the equation. So 710 over r squared is going to be equal to 4 pi r. And if I multiply by r squared, I get 710 equals 4 pi r cubed. So finally, that means r cubed is going to be equal to 710 divided by 4 pi. Now this is just a calculation you can do on your calculator, um, the cube root of this, and you should get r is approximately equal to 3.84 centimeters. Okay, so the most economical dimensions, I now know what the radius is going to be, but I do need to find the height. So the height is going to be, we have an equation for it that we substituted in, and so that's pi times r, 3.84 squared. And if you do that calculation, you should get approximately 7.66 centimeters. Okay, so I'm not going to prove that it is um, a minimum or a maximum. This is a minimum. And maybe your teacher asked you to do a first derivative test, or maybe by now you've also learned a second derivative test. So you should refer to your teacher as to how they want you to um, maybe they don't want to do anything other than state a concluding statement, but you should check. Okay, now if you're finding these difficult, you're not alone, okay? These are difficult problems and probably you might even not know how to begin them. But once you've seen how this is done, the next time you see an economical dimensions of, a, of any shape, you should have a good idea on how to start it. Okay, so don't lose faith. Let's move on to the second one. It says, find the dimensions and area of the largest rectangle that can be placed inside a semicircle of radius 8 centimeters. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is draw a diagram. So here's my semicircle, and all I know is that this is 8 centimeters long. Okay, so let's say if the, the length here and the height, that's so I'm trying to... Um, dimensions of an area, large, so I'm maximizing the area. So we know what area is. Area is length times width of a rectangle. And in this case, if we give the area some variables, let's say this is y. What we want to do in this case, and this is probably where you might get lost, we have a nice little, rect a little triangle here, right? So there's a nice little triangle that I can... Um, right angle triangle, which I have the hypotenuse for, I have the height as y. So if I have to make this x, I want to make this x because then this whole length here will be 2x. And that's kind of the algorithm for you to figure these out. So this is going to be 2xy, right? 2x, 2x times y is the area of this little rectangle. Now again, I have two variables, and I want to um, I want to get it in terms of one variable before I take the derivative. And I do have this nice little rectangle here or triangle that I can find y in terms of x. Okay, so this is Pythagorean theorem, right? We get to use that a lot, even past grade ten. So I have x eight squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So that means y squared is going to be equal to 64 minus x squared, and y is going to be equal to the square root 
of 64 minus x squared. Whatever you do, do not tell me that that's 8 minus x. That is not the square root of this. And the reason I can just give the positive value, usually you would say plus or minus, is that the length or the width here, whatever you want to call it, has to be greater than 0. Okay, so now I'm going to substitute this y into this equation. So I have 2 x and my y now is going to be and I'm going to put it in brackets 64 minus x squared to the half power okay remember we want to get rid of these radical signs so we can take the derivative more easily okay so now I'm taking the derivative and this is a product okay so I have 2x times this thing so I'm going to say well I want the first times the derivative of the second. Make sure you use lots of brackets. There's nothing wrong. They're free. Okay, so I have 64 minus x squared. I reduce the exponent by 1, makes it negative a half, and the derivative of the inside is minus 2x. Don't forget your little chain rule here. Okay, that's the first part of it. Don't stop. Plus this times the derivative of that. The derivative of 2x is 2, and we have 64 minus x squared and do the radical sign again. Okay, so let's simplify this here. So I have 2x times a half, that's x, times minus 2x. So that's going to be minus 2x squared, right? Minus 2x squared. Um, and then I have this, 64 minus x squared, it's in the denominator here. So the square root of 64 minus x squared. And then over here, I have plus 2 times the square root of 64 minus x squared, and it's over 1. Okay, so I've taken the derivative, but now in order to combine these so that I can solve to make it equal to, like, where is it going to be zeros for the critical values? Um, you could you could do two things, right? I could just make this over the same denominator. I could set it to zero and move this to the other side. Let's do it that way. So let's move this over here. So first I'm going to say, for critical values, set a prime equal to zero. So I can't just start moving things around because I have an a prime on this side. So now because I've set it equal to zero, I can put the 2x squared and change the sign because I, I cross the equal sign. So that's going to be equal to, and on the other side, I have 2 square root 64 minus x squared. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by... Um, 64 minus, minus this one here, right? I'm going to multiply by this on both sides, and that's going to give me 2x squared is equal to, so I have 2, and this times this, it would have been the same thing if I made a common denominator here, right? If I did a common denominator, I would have said, okay, i got to put this over square root 64 minus x squared, which means I'd have to multiply that here. So it's the same math whether you do this or you do this. Okay, so if I multiply a radical by itself, same radical, I can throw away the radical sign and I have 2 times 64 minus x squared. Okay, we're getting there. So now I have 2x squared, 2x squared equals 128 minus 2x squared. I bring this to the other side. That gives me 4x squared are equal to 128. I'm going to bring it over here. Divide by 4. x squared is equal to 32. So x is going to be equal to the square root of 32, which I can write nicely because 32 is 16 times 2. So it gives me 4 root 2. And I'm also going to say that x has to be greater than 0. We can't have a length less than zero, so I don't need to show the negative. Okay, so I've got the x value, and I want the dimensions and the area. So for the dimensions, um, I need two of these, right, to get... Let me see if I can 
but it's still there. I have two X's here, one. So this length is going to be two times this. So therefore length is eight root two and the width or the Y value and if you look at the y value here, it's 64 minus x squared. So if x is the square root of 32, that squared will give me 32. So I have 64 minus 32 is a root of 32. So y is equal to, I'll write that out here in case you didn't follow that. Okay, so I have this minus um, x squared is 32. So that's going to be the square root of 32, which is the same thing as 4 root 2, as we already said. Okay, and finally, if you want to know the area, you have to multiply 8 root 2 times 4 root 2. Okay, so let's do area equals 8 root 2 times 4 root 2. 8 times 4 is 32 times root 2 times root 2 is 2. That gives me 64 and it will be centimeters squared. Okay, so again, that's kind of a tricky one if you didn't know how to set it up, right? Once you've seen how these are set up, you can find any rectangle with inside any semicircle of any radius, right? Okay, let's get to the last one, which I found was just a little bit tricky. It's something you might not have seen before. So the so windows can be to be constructed with the shape of an equilateral triangle on top of a rectangle. Oh, my pencil is not working. Um, it will have a perimeter of 600 centimeters. Maximize, <laughs> you hear me clicking away back here. Maximize the area to obtain the most light. Okay, so I'm going to have to do this in ink because I don't have another. Oh, maybe I have a pencil here. Andy. Okay, so let's put some variables on this first of all. If it's an equilateral triangle, that means that all these three sides are going to be the same, right? So let's call them X, X, X. Now this isn't part of the perimeter, right? You're not gonna count that because it says the window has a perimeter of 600 centimeters. So this is an X here and let's call these Y. Okay, so What's my perimeter going to be? Perimeter is going to be three X's plus two Y's. And that's going to be equal to 600. Three X plus two Y. So that means Y is going to be equal to, um, well, if I bring it all over, it would be 600 minus three X divided by two. So it's going to be 300 minus three halves X. Okay, so I want to uh, maximize the area. So I have the area of a triangle plus the area of a rectangle. That's not a rectangle. That's going to be the total area. Okay, so the total area is the area of a triangle plus the area of a rectangle. So what's the area of the triangle? Now that's where it gets a little tricky because we have this beautiful equilateral triangle. And I'm going to go back over here just for a second to show you how we're going to find the height. You know the area of a triangle, area of the base times the height, but I have no idea what the height is and I don't have any other measurements here, right? So I do know that this is X and this from here to here is a half of an X, right? Because this is all X, X, X. So this is going to be a half X, X, and this is going to be my height here. So let's express that using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'd say, well, well, x squared is equal to h squared plus a half x quantity squared. So h squared plus one quarter x squared. So I don't want to know what, I want to find another variable, uh, another expression for h here. So moving everything around, I would get h squared equals x squared minus a quarter x squared. And of course, one x squared is four fourths minus one quarter. So that's three quarters x squared. 
And if I want just h, I have to take the square root of both sides. So that's going to be root 3, 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. And this is the key to solving this question, finding an expression for h. Okay, so let's go back up here. The area of the triangle was 1 half base times the height, and the area of the rectangle was going to be x times y. Okay, we already had that one. That was easy, x, y. Base times height. So now we know what is the base of this triangle. Okay, don't look at the little half one. We want the whole thing. So this area of the base was x. So I have a half times x. And my height from um, a little down the page here was root 3 over 2 x plus x times y. So we have a lot of substitutions here, so we're going to plug in y now. So we have 300 minus 3 halves x. Okay, so all we have to do now, the easy part, is to, like this was the hard part, right? Setting it all up, finding an expression for y, finding an expression for the, um, the height, so we knew this was an x, so you have to get rid of things to make everything in terms of one variable. So if I expand this now, I'm going to have root 3 over 4, I'm just multiplying, plus 300x minus 3 halves x squared, which this should have been an x squared too, because with x times x, 3 quarters x squared minus 3 halves x squared. Okay, so let's take the derivative, or we could um, we could simplify these x squareds first, but it's it's going to be kind of messy because we're going to have. Uh, let's just leave it this way. Watch, I'll show you. It's not so bad. Let's take the derivative of this. So I have two times root three over four. So that's root three over two x plus three hundred, and the derivative of this is going to be minus three x. So if I simplify this, this is going to be 6 over 2, right? Minus 6 over 2. So I have minus 6 plus root 3 all over 2x plus 300. Okay, so that's my simplified derivative. And now I'm going to say for critical values, set a prime equal to 0. And so I get... Um, this is where it gets kind of tricky, right? Because this is minus a plus thing. And if I bring it over here, what happens to the signs? So don't bother removing this one. Move this one. You know what happens if you move this over to the other side? It just becomes minus 300, right? So if you're confused and you're not sure what's going to happen to the signs, especially when you have minus a plus over 2, it's actually going to be the minus of all of this, but it's easier just to move this one, right? You don't have to get fancy. X doesn't have to be on the left side. It can still be on the right side. So I have minus 6 plus root 3 over 2x. I multiply both sides by 2, and I divide by the numerator. So x is going to be equal to minus 600, right? 2 times this, 2 times that, and divide by minus 6 plus root 3. And if you do all of that calculation, you should get x is approximately 140 point, let's do two decimal places, 0.58 centimeters. And then your next job is to solve for y. And I'll let you do that on your own because it's just calculation, right? You should get approximately 89.13 centimeters. And if you, um, it says maximize the area to obtain the most light. It didn't ask particularly what it wanted. It's not a very good question. It probably was written better than the way I wrote it out. It probably would have said, give the dimensions that you need. Okay, so you want an, your X to be 140.58 centimeters, your Y 89.13 centimeters. And you could go back and figure out the area by doing the area calculation. Okay, so I have one more session of, of um, optimization problems with another three word problems that will be in the next lesson. Hope this helps you out and see you soon.